Microsoft Fabric provides essential features such as pausing and resuming to cut costs during downtime and scaling to adjust capacity as required. Efficiently managing this task is crucial for maximizing resource usage and maintaining operational flexibility. My name is Wahid and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a fabric capacity control panel using Power BI and Power Automate to streamline these operations and make it easier to manage your capacities effectively. So let's review the overall structure of this a solution. The overall structure of this solution is to have a Power BI report with three different or four different buttons to trigger the, some flows, which those flows will first scan and subscription and Azure subscription and then find all the Microsoft capacities in that subscription and save all the information or required information about those fabric capacities into an streaming data set. Then I will show you how to set up three different flows to resume, pause and escape those capacities and then save the capacities information after each of those uh, action into that streaming data set and visualizing those information in that Power BI repo. So the output of the, this uh, solution will be something like this, four buttons here. This one will scan the capacity, the Azure and Azure subscription. This one will activate or resume the capacity or capacities. You can select one capacity or more than one capacities. And when you click on this active, all of those capacities will be active or will be paused. And then you will be able to select an SKU and then said, for example, select F4 and then click on this button and all the selected capacities here will change to F4. Maybe one of them will scale up, one of them will scale down. So let's create this solution together. So first thing we need to do is to create a streaming data set to save the information about all of the Microsoft Fabric capacities. So in Power BI service, select the workspace, click on new, and then select streaming data set in the list and click on that. Then in this window, click API, select API and click on next. Then we need uh, to add a name to our uh, data set. I will add a name as a fabric, uh, fabric capacity, let's say cap uh, info, fabric cap info. Then we need to define the columns here. So first column name will be capacity name. Then the SKU and state of that is it paused or active then date time that when we uh, collect those data what date and what time we collect those data this information are based on what time maybe after that someone in azure portal changed that one so saving the date and time is very important then the resource group we might have different fabric capacities in different resource groups. All of them should be text except this one date and time need to be date and time. Then here make sure to turn on the historic data analysis to be able to save the old data and keep the historic data into this data set. And then we will click on create and done. Okay. Or a streaming data set is created. What we need to do, we need to connect that to a Power BI repo. So in Power BI Desktop, uh, here I will connect that to this Power BI Desktop. Let me search for that one, Fabric Cap Info. Then click on Connect. So there is only one table in the streaming data set. If you have 10 streaming data sets, then the name of the table for all of them is real time data. So real time data is always the name of the table, the only table for a streaming data set. And then if I open that one, I can see the name of 
all columns which I defined when I set up that data set. So let me add a table visual here and add all of those columns here. Say resource group and date and time. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, that's too big. I think that's enough for now. Okay, so uh, at the moment, there is no information in this uh, streaming data set. What I want to do, first, I want to create a button here, which when I click on that one, that will trigger a Power Automate flow, and the output of that flow is the list of all Microsoft Fabric capacities and the information, this information about those capacities. So I need to scan the uh, Azure subscription and find all of those fabric capacities. So click on this uh, Power Automate for Power BI Visual. And this visual, the output of this visual is a button that uh, when you click on that, that will trigger a flow in the Power Automate and that flow maybe have many uh, actions and that will trigger, that's a trigger for all of those actions. And then when you click on this, without leaving the Power BI, you can trigger then that Power Automate flow. So here you can first add data here, which for this flow, which is the first flow we want to create and connect that, assign that to this button. We don't need to add any of this value here in the Power Automate data, but for the next flows, we need to use those columns but for now we don't need to add anything here so we need to skip this uh, first step and then move to this setup your flow click on this three dots at the top and then click on edit when you click on edit then the power automate page will be open here so click on new and then click on stand cloud flow so uh, the first uh, the first item here is the trigger, which is that Power BI button clicked. So no additional information is needed here. So we need to add the first action here. So before that, let me add a name here, scan your sub, find all fabric capacities, caps. Okay, that's a name for that one. And then uh, the first action uh, will be in the Azure resource group. Group of actions here. And there is a action here, list resources by subscription. Let me list, search for that, list resources by subscription. Yes, this one here. So what this action will do for us, uh, when let me click on this drop down, select the subscription. If you have uh, more than one subscription, you can see the name of them here and you can select one of them here. I will select this one. Then when I run this flow now, let me save it first. If I run this flow, this action uh, will scan all the resources in this uh, subscription, we'll scan that subscription and we'll return the name and some details about all the resources. If you have a fabric capacity, if you have a SQL database or any other resources, then you will get the information as a, a result of this action. But I don't want to see the details for all the resources. I only need fabric capacity resources, the real fabric capacity uh, details. So here, if I click on uh, advanced to advanced options, I can see there are three options and I can set, set a filter to only uh, see the fabric capacity data and information as a result of this action. Let me open this page here. So that action is quite similar to this resource manager API. So here, if I go uh, this one, let me open that here. Yeah, this one, the resource list in the resource manager API. And here you can see some details uh, about the filter. The, this link is in my 
web like so you can find that there um, here in the filter it it explain if you want to filter the uh, for example properties of those web resources you can filter that by location resource type name and many other items but i just need to set the filter by resource type so here i can where was that in power bi so i can set uh, this filter here let me zoom in a little bit now you can see i uh, see the filter resource type equal microsoft fabric capacities you can find this filter and the text in my blog post so you just need to copy paste it here so okay the result now filtered and just uh, microsoft fabric uh, capacities details will be returned so now i have those data then i need to if there are more than one capacity then i need to scan one by one to find the info all the information about those capacities i will save this one here and then let's move to power automate web version let me refresh this one so when we clear create that flow inside power bi desktop then it will be created in this in, a, in a, you can see that in the power bi power automate web version as well so let me click on that one i just want to test it so in power automate here let me save and apply in the power bi then when that's done and i return get it to report i can see there is a big button and when i click on that button here in power bi desktop if you want to click on that one you need to hold the control and then click on that and then back to uh, the web version of power automate and you can see the result here so just one second ago i click on that button and then successful so let's see what items and what details will be returned here as a result of res uh, resource by subscription action so we can see the id which have which is the full id of that subscription and you can see there is one capacity name fabric capacity test uh, the type of that is fabric capacity the sku for that is f2 then is in australia the location and then there is another capacity and that's uh, fabric f2 as well and is in australia but we can't find any information about the status of them or state of them are the those uh, capacities uh, paused or active we can't find it here because if i go to azure portal i can show you there are two capacities and both of them are paused as you can see here both of them are paused and these this information the status is very important i need that which I can't find it here. The other important information is these two are part of two different resource group. Here for this one, the fabric capacity test, it, this one is part of this group, fabric cap, but the other one, the next fabric is part of the real time test resource group. So I need that uh, resource group, I, uh, the resource group information as well, which I can find it in this ID section. If I go a little bit right, yes, uh, here you can see the resource group is real time test for the, for this capacity next fabric. And that's correct. Next fabric is real time test. And then I can see that information here. Uh, go a little bit left resource group is fabric so the only miss part of the information we need to save those columns we define in our streaming data set is the state or status of these uh, capacities to show them are on uh, are active or past so let's back to actually we can uh, edit the flow here we don't need to go back to power bi and edit it there both of them uh, are okay. You can uh, click on edit and and then uh, update your flow here inside Power BI Automate, or you can continue and use the Power Automate uh, web version. So here I will continue this one. Uh, so here in the Power BI uh, in the Power Automate uh, web version, um, here I need to add another action 
to find out that status and the name of that action again is in Azure resource group um, is part of the resource Azure resource manager and here if you search for read a resource then what this action will do this action um, scan and read all the information about the specific resource you define and you select and add the details here and will return all the information we need that status will be part of the result of this action so subscription is easy it's same as the previous one and then resource group this is a little bit tricky because if I open this one, it will show me all the resource groups, four resource groups I have, but I, I know I have two capacities with two different resource groups. So I need to write a formula here and I need to uh, make that dynamic rather than select on static one. So I will click add a custom item and here, um, here click on this FX and then scroll a little bit right and then I need to write add a description here so let me show you one thing before I write that there this is the format of the ID and you can see the, here is the subscription then the ID of the subscription then resource group and fabric cap so we, we can use this function or this expression to find that the fourth part this is the first part it's the second part is the third part and this is the fourth part so if i split the id section the id which is here the output of the previous action and then take the fourth part then i will find the further that resource group so let me back to here and then if i copy paste that expression here that expression is in the blog post so you can just copy paste it here if i click on save then uh, it will be like this and if i click on okay the power uh, because i just now what i did i said okay from the output of this action list resource by subscription find the id and then take the fourth part of that text and that's a resource group and it here but there are more than one capacity or there are more resources details are inside the output of this one so if i click on ok it will create a loop to read a resource because it will read just only one resource it will create a loop to read one by one all of those resources will be read by this one so one by one so if i click on ok actually it didn't add that one but if i okay so if i add that because that's a function that's fine so if i add search for the resource provider which is fabric here and then if i add the resource id here then that loop will be created short id real short resource id first we need to add the capa uh, capacities and then the slash and then here we can use one the dynamic value uh, output of this resource uh, list resources by subscription which is the name if i add that one here we go so now the loop is created actually um, it should be created for this one as well because uh, but it because we wrote a we wrote a function it didn't understand that one but by the way what why there is a loop why apply each automatically added here because there are two capacities as an output of list resources by subscription and to read one by one and to support to cover all of those resources the loop added here to say for example name one is the next fabric capacity here and then name and then go to the next one which is the fabric capacity if you have more then it go to through one by one so okay and then the client version is always to 23.11.01 so we have all of those information now so let's test it let me save this one now i can test it here because i run that one time from power bi so i can test it with that uh, recently used trigger so click on test now it's done those data are here and you can see two um, two times it uh, ran all uh, this read and read a resource because there are two 
output from uh, two capacities as output e of this list resources by subscription let's see the first one so the first one output as you can see here the output so first the id which we already have that one uh, name fabric capacity australian location if you add any tags here if you add a tag here you can find those tags here and then there is a properties which is the list of new data so this is the important things we are looking for the state which is paused now and if i go to the next one and that's paused that's correct that's pause and if i go to the next one then the next one is the next fabric and that is paused as well and you can see even the member of that if you have the list of the uh, members then you can find those information as well okay so we have all of the data we just need to add another action to save those data into that streaming data set click on add a new action search for power bi in power bi you can find if you add, click uh, search for rows there is one action add rows to a data set if i click on that one then in the workspace if you click uh, you can see the name of the double workspaces i will select demo then the data set name fabric cap, uh, fabric cap info and the table always real time data because that's a streaming dots and all the columns will be added here okay so capacity name is easy we can use a output of the reader resource name is the capacity name sku is easy, easy as well so sku name here uh, state is a little bit uh, let me is a little bit um, yeah it's a little bit tricky because it's part of the properties if i go down if i search for state you can't find it here because it's part of the information inside the properties uh, properties as part of the reader resource inside the properties the state is there so we need to add this, this expression as well here so the expression will be this one so uh, the output of reader resource this one body slash properties which will uh, uh, which will show that okay from this reader resource we need that property and inside the property is state which is the data we are looking for actually we need to add it here okay like this okay save it and then the date and time you can again use a dynamic uh, information here and that uh, can be here at the end timestamp because we want to know this state this scale you uh, what and what time that is for example that capacity was uh was active or, or, or on pause so we need to know on what time because maybe when you run this one and then uh, someone in fab in azure portal change the status of that one activate that one or just uh, pause that capacity then uh, it will be a totally different story so uh, I'll be show you how we can manage that uh, that one through this video but for now we need to know these data are based on what time so we can click on the time timestamp and add it here but that's a UTC time but I'm in Australia I just need that one in Australia time so again you can write a formula here and that expression is this one convert from UTC so that we get timestamp and then convert that to Australia Eastern Standard. That's it. And the resource group will be the same uh, formula we used before. We use this uh, split that from the ID section. So here again, write it here. Okay, that's great. So click on save and we are ready to go. So. <clears throat> let's save that again so rather than save it here now because this flow in and previously we assigned that to that button so whatever um, update you apply here if you add actions if you remove something when you click on this button that will run this flow so what the, the the latest version of that flow will be started so okay let me click on this one and see uh, here 
how long does it take to be completed just three seconds and if i refresh the visuals then all of this information will be added here so now we can see there are two capacities both of them f2 and both of them are paused one of them is in this capacity this resource group and one of them is in this resource group on what time both of them uh, were paused on this day and this time which is great so if i click on that again then that will be triggered again and here three seconds and if i refresh then we can let me refresh sorted by date and time and you can see here again those information are here so that's great because we want to create a control panel and control all the capacities this this uh, this one this uh, flow is really really helpful let me change the name of that one uh, capacities status let me make that bigger so whenever you want to use the other buttons which we will uh, we will add them to this uh, control uh, control panel uh, we can first start this trigger this one to make sure okay what is the current status of all of my capacities like now and then take action so okay the next part what we want to do we want to add two new buttons here with two new flows uh, so first one will uh, will activate will active a capacity and the second one will pause it so when it pause i want to be able to activate that capacity one capacity or a list of, if you have 10 capacities maybe you just want to activate three of them so you can select which uh, which capacity because capacities need to be activated or you can just select all of them and activate all of them so that's a that's a good one so before that we need to add a slicer here to be able to slot to filter the data and that's based on the capacity name let me make that as a drop down and okay and keep it here so if i click on each of them then i can see the data for only that capacity let me keep this one a little bit okay <clears throat> that's great so now with this slice cell i can select if i click on the new button i will uh, i will create an ad here then i can select okay only take action if I, you want to click on that active just active this capacity or just this one or both of them or if you have 10 select one one to three of them and then when you click on that one based on this data the selected capacities will be active so now i will remove all the filter here i will click on the power automate again and this time we need to add the data here because we want to know which capacities are selected so only need this capacity name for now but we need another information because we have different capacities in different resource groups so we need to know the resource group for each of them so i need this resource group as well so two items need to be added here I don't need to write any formula or any measure to say okay it's the selected value or whatever no only add the columns here because maybe you select more than one uh, data and you need to know all of them so the data we need for this flow have been added now this to column capacity name and resource group then we can click on edit click on edit click on new and instant cloud flow and here add a name for that active fab cap fab capacities then again the trigger is that that button and the next step here is uh, to read a resource first we need to make sure those um, those selected capacities which we want to active them are paused at the moment if that's active we don't need to take any action yes uh, let me add it first here read the let me search for as a resource and then read a resource 
So those information, for example, the status of those capacities are inside this uh, table. But when we want to click on the start or pause button, we don't know uh, this data or the current status or not. The best scenario is first click on the scan, uh, scan capacities to see the status of them, then click on the uh, click on the slide cell and then check those uh, the select those capacities which are paused and then activate them. Uh, but on the other hand, if at uh, concurrently someone in Azure portal change that status, maybe you face with an error. So it's good to check that here and then set the condition. So, okay. So subscription again is the first one resource group. Uh, so resource group can be different. We need to use the resource group from this column we added here. So enter custom value can then select the resource group here. If I click on that one, then again, it will add this action into a loop. And that's because there might be more than one item there. And then the resource provider is fabric. Short resource ID capacities slash and then the capacity name. From the data we added here, we can see them here as a output of this trigger power BI button clicked and then the, here there are some items and two of them are exactly same as this data we added here. Client uh, version ID 2000, 2023 11 01. So now we will check the status of those uh, capacities we selected here, which we want to activate them. Then we need to add a condition. Okay. And that condition will be if the state or status of that is active, we don't need to take any action. If that's paused, then we need to change that here. Um, in here again, I will add this, uh, this um, expression, which I used in the previous flow as well. The output of the read the resource inside the property state, click on OK. And if that's equal to active, then if yes, you don't need to take any action. But if it's no, then we need to use another action inside the, again, you search for Azure resource here and then search for invoke and then select this invoke resource operation subscription again easy the first one resource group again we need to write uh, uh, we need to select a custom value we need to select this column we added here resource group uh, resource provider fabric resource ID capacities and then the this column capacity name client version 2023 11 then 01 an action name will be active to activate that uh, sorry resume resume yes resume it's same as what we see here resume so we need to add it here the body leave it blank and then when you change that status there are two uh, way to manage this action you can leave it as is just change it and then click on that other button to scan the, the scan all capacities and then add the new status of those capacities there or you can again read this resource here and then add it into this uh, real time dot set or that is streaming dot set, which I think that's a good uh, method. And so I will add it there. So I don't need to create it from scratch again. So I can copy this one to my clipboard and here rather than set it up from scratch, just in my clipboard, select that. Okay. So Let me do it again. Okay, it seems that doesn't work now. Anyway, we can set we can set it easily. So here 
read a resource gain subscription same resource group from that power bi resource group name provider fabric resource id capacities slash the name of capacity from the power bi and this column we added here and then the climate version 2023 11 01 and that's it and now we need to save it to that power bi streaming data set power bi click on that one rows add rows to a data set click to select the workspace demo data set name fabric cabin for table real time data and then here again we can define those information this time we need to save the data from the output of the resource 2 make sure you select the data from reader resource 2 because the same data you can find for the reader resource and those are all data from here we take some action uh, before read the resource too so those data are not valid anymore so make sure you're using this one or you can just rename that uh, current for example status and here if you click on the capacity name then the current status use it there so capacity name is the name sku is here sku name and then state this one is a little bit tricky because if I copy paste that expression then the name of that I just change it to current status so I need to change it here to current status okay now it's okay date and time I can use that expression to change it that to convert the date and time uh, to Australia and then the resource group um, I can add it from here. I don't need to uh, again run, uh, uh, split the ID and find the resource group from the output of the previous actions. So here if I go down, I have the resource group. Okay, that's okay. That's done. So let's test it now. <clears throat> when you save it, make sure to save and apply. And that means this flow will be applied to that button. So if you click on save and apply and then back to the report then there is a big button like this one so i can make it a little bit smaller let's change this one to active uh, capacity and then i want to make it as a green one like this so at the moment here this capacity is paused, so I want to click on this resume, but I want to use this button. So here, if I click on all, it will take uh, action on all of them and will try to activate all the, the, all the capacities at the moment too. But let me select one first. For example, fabric capacity test. I just want to make that one active so click on this trigger let me go to here power automate uh, web version to see the status of that so in six seconds that is completed and i only selected this one so if i back to here you can see that change in the portal it changed to activate and if i go to my report and refresh the visuals because a new row added to the streaming data set and that's a real-time data so and the connection here is a direct connection so that uh, just refresh the visual will show the new data here so that's active now so if i select refresh everything i need to refresh this one so you can see one of them is active one of them is paused so now one of them is active one of them is paused and i selected all if i click on active again then it will try to active both of them. And, but based on that condition, it will ignore the first one because that's already active. And in eight seconds, that's done. It is active. 
and this one is resuming and that's active now so that's great if i back to my repo refresh the visuals both of them are active now without any issue if i didn't add that condition the flow will face an issue so now what i need to do i need to add another button here for pausing that and that's very easy because i have a button here with the active i just need to change the condition to suspend or pause that one so what i will do inside the power uh, open the power automate web version and make a copy of this active fab which we created in, recently here save as change that to pause fabcap and save it we can edit this one and then assign that and apply that to a button in the power bi which is very easy make sure to turn that on first go to edit and this time you don't need to touch anything just change the condition and a little bit uh, text here in the invoke resource so when that's active we want to add all of this action here when that active we want to take action here and pause that so here i need to copy paste this in for this items to there so first i want to do this one to here and then i need to copy this one to clipboard because if i want to try to this one it won't do that because these two are connected to each other so i will clip them to clipboard clip this one to clipboard and i will remove this one the this one and then okay now i can move it here because that connect uh, connection remove and then add action from clipboard add rule dot set everything set because i copied that before and everything are there so only thing i need to do everything set here everything good only thing i need to change here let me do one thing sometimes it face this issue so try to add a new for example action here so like whatever so like this one and just remove it not pick a code delete and now if i click on this one all the items are here so change this one so here in the condition i said okay if the status is active if yes then action name will be suspend suspend that means pause uh, that uh, capacity that's okay so save it it will be saved here back to power bi copy paste this button and then this time i want to change uh, the text to pause pause capacity and the color this red one click on edit at the moment this active one is applied to that one but we created a pause one just click on apply and that's successfully applied to this button you don't need to take any action here back here let's see what will happen i just want to pause this one so at the moment uh, let me refresh this is active if you want to make sure this one is active or not you can first run this one to read the current status and you can see it's active and then you can because we selected only one capacity just click on pause let's see the status of that action here it will take a little bit more time but here you can see that is already paused and so it should be successful yeah successful and that paused so here if i refresh that is paused and now if i select all of them both of them so one of them is paused one of them is active to make sure just run this capacity scan that will take few seconds if i run that one i can see one of them active one of them paused and I'm, now i want to select all here i don't want to select one capacity or two capacities just take that action on all of them so pause the capacity pause all of them so click on that and here 
you can see this one is paused already this one is pausing because it is in progress now and this one is pausing so this one is paused and this one is paused as well so this one is successful and if i back to my uh, report and refresh my visual both of them if i filter this way both of them let me refresh it okay both of them are paused at the 11 21 27 so here i can see this capacity status again let me click on that one and then pause it yeah both of them are paused you can edit those uh, the, those flows here and then update them and all of them will be so will be applied to all of those buttons so what we need to do now it the, the, the report is here I just need to publish it and publish that one let's say with as a fab cap save it there and then demo I just want to publish it there okay so if I go to power alt uh, power bi now so refresh my page so it's here so now i don't need to hold control or anything because these buttons uh, uh let me bring this a little bit down okay good save uh not mobile layout actually waiting so here so i can click on capacity status and that will work if i refresh the visuals only the visuals click on this so those two are added here if i uh, at the moment both of them are paused if i want to activate both click on this uh, active or resume capacities and then both of them will be active this one is active now and this one will be active in second so that's resuming now and that's active so if i refresh that both of them are active if i want to pause them now i click on pause and both of them will be paused so this one is active so now start pausing it means it means the flow is working very well and then this one sometimes when you're pausing it takes time but anyway we can see it is working so it will take sometimes one or two minutes to pause the capacities but it's fine because we don't want to resume and pause the capacities every minute so that's fine rather than this trigger the button here you can set some uh timing time trigger to say okay at 12 o'clock pm turn off all of my capacities on 5 a.m turn all of them on so this is the end of this um, this video but i will explain in the next video the link is in the description and you can see it in there so i will explain that how to add another flow and button here and a slicer here to scale up and down this uh, these capacities if this is f2 and you want to change it to f4 you can select f4 in this capacity this slicer for example select this one and click on that and that will be a scale up to f2 f4 if that uh, f4 and you want to scale that down you can scale this like f2 here click on that that will uh, scale to f2 you can uh, you can again select uh, uh, you can select all capacities to scale all of them or just fear to add some of them or two of them so this is this is very very useful and i hope you enjoyed and liked this video so let me know if you have any comments and highly recommend to uh, to watch the second part of this uh, video so let's go to the next video